Here are 20 secrets you probably missed in Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin, and one bonus secret that you definitely need to know about. Number 1. Kicking things off, we're starting in the Forest of the Fallen Giants at the Cardinal Tower Bonfire, and this secret absolutely blew my mind when I first discovered it, which if I'm being honest, I didn't actually find until my third playthrough, annoyingly. From the bonfire, head down the ladder and then turn left and follow the passage to the left. Then, head up the long branch which will take you to the top of the wall. Head to the end of the wall and you will see a load of barrels against the wall. Well, either you got really lucky and one of the enemies will accidentally throw a bomb that way and explode the barrels, or you can do it yourself with a handy firebomb. And would you look at that, the barrels blew up the wall, creating a much needed shortcut back to the Cardinal Tower bonfire. I was so elated and annoyed that it had taken me so long to discover this shortcut. I really could have used this on my first two playthroughs. Number 2. From the Cardinal Tower bonfire, head down towards Mauled Mannered Pate, walk through the metal gate and turn right and enter the building. Follow the corridor round to the left, and then when you reach the bottom of the staircase, there will be an illusory wall on the right hand side. Press enter to unveil the illusory wall. Remember in Dark Souls 2, attacking or rolling into these types of illusory walls doesn't work. Once inside, you will find the Sorcerer's Staff and an Amber Herb. This staff is a must-have early item for anyone wanting to do a mage playthrough. Number 3. Back to the Cardinal Tower bonfire, and if you head upstairs, you will find a locked door. This door can literally just be broken down, and inside you will find a hollow soldier helm, hand axe, radiant life gem, and inside a chest, a small leather shield and a repair powder. If you then exit the room via the door on the other side of the room, it will take you to a room with a broken floor just above the bonfire. In here, you will find another chest containing a small white sign soapstone and a radiant life gem. You can then drop down through the floor onto the tree branch and collect a divine blessing. Number 4. Head to the room containing all the ballistas and once you have killed all the enemies, head down the ladder. Down in this room you will find a trap chest, so be sure to dodge out of the way when you open it. Inside the chest is a much needed titanite shard. Also in the room is a sconce to light with your torch and a Pharos Lockstone contraption. If you use a Pharos Lockstone, this will unveil an illusory wall, which you will need to attack to open. Once inside, you will find two chests, one containing the Claranthry Ring, which increases your stamina recovery rate by 12.5%, and another chest containing a Titanite Slab. Finally, in this room is a locked door. In order to open this door, just try knocking. The disgruntled guards will then open the door, dispatch them, and then you can open the chest containing the Life Ring, which raises maximum HP by 5%, and a large Titanite Shard. Number 5. After defeating the Pursuer boss at the end of the Forest of the Fallen Giants, head through the passage and turn right before the two guards attacking the tree. On the ledge you will find a bird's nest, which is a nice throwback to Dark Souls 1. If you hit enter when in the nest, you will be taken to an alternative area in the Lost Bastille. In this area you will immediately be greeted by a bonfire and two chests containing a dull ember and a human effigy. If you leave this room, you can then navigate towards another building with a radiant life gem and a large titanite shard on the floor. If you then drop down, you will find a chest containing the covetous silver serpent ring, which causes fallen enemies to yield 10% more souls, a human effigy, and a fragrant branch of yore. But be warned, our friendly neighbourhood pursuer will soon be on the case ready to stab you in the back. Number 6. In the Lost Bastille, if you head down the path with all of the explosive barrels, you will usually find an enemy by a barrel on its side at the top of the stairs. Ordinarily, if you walk up the stairs, the enemy will roll the barrel down the stairs and it will explode creating a shortcut to both Blacksmith Macduff's workshop and to the bonfire. If the enemy no longer respawns, you can do this yourself. Just push the barrel down the stairs and then throw a firebomb at it. Number 7. In Macduff's workshop, you will find a plethora of chests containing all sorts of goodies from iron arrows, heavy bolts, titanite shards and a large titanite shard. But did you ever notice that Macduff is also sat on top of a chest? Well, in order to access it, all you need to do is light the sconce in his workshop, then rest at a bonfire. Once you load back in, Macduff will be stood at his anvil, and you will now be able to open the final chest in the workshop. And this chest contains a craftsman hammer and a twinkling titanite. This is a really good hammer to utilise for the early stages of the game. Number 8. We're going to take a quick trip over to No Man's Wharf, and hidden inside the house containing the sleeping guards and all the poison casks is a secret room behind a breakable wall, which has a different pattern to all the other walls in the house. All you need to do is attack the wall, and you will then find a room containing a crystal lizard and a chest. In the chest you will find the Royal Soldier's Ring, which when equipped will increase your maximum load limit by 10%. Number 9. Gavlan Wheel. Gavlan Deal. Inside the building containing the area shortcut, near Gavlan, at the bottom of the staircase you will find an illusory wall directly beneath the stairs. 
In this room, you will find two chests containing some firebombs and a large titanite shard. Number 10. Traveling back to the Lost Bastille from No Man's Wharf, and you will find a large cage elevator. If you ride the elevator to the top and then send it back down again, and quickly run out before the gate closes, you can then walk on top of the elevator. Once it has reached the very bottom again, you will find a secret cave containing a scimitar. Number 11. After leaving the Exile holding cells, you can follow the path and head down the ladder. In this area are various enemies on breakable towers, and dogs ready to attack. Behind one of the wooden towers, once broken, you can access a narrow passageway which contains a chest, and in the chest is a much needed Estus Flask Shard and a large Titanite Shard. Number 12. In the large area where the Pursuer spawns in, there is a boarded up doorway. Break it down and head through. Once you have killed the enemies in here, head out the door into a small courtyard. Again, kill all the enemies and you will find a well with a stone on the ledge. Now for anyone that has played Dark Souls before, you know what to do here. Attack the stone and it will fall into the well, drawing up a cage containing three enemies. Quickly dispatch them and then you can collect the Wanderer's armor set. Number 13. After you have collected from the well, head into the building either via the door or via the ladder down the side of the building. On the back wall, there will be a breakable wall with some explosive barrels in front of it. Now, in this room, there are some very trigger fire enemies that chuck firebombs left, right and centre. So odds are, this wall will get broken in the fray. But as always, if this doesn't happen, just use a firebomb and blow up the barrels. Inside the secret room, you will find the Archdrake robes and Archdrake shield. Number 14. To the left of the breakable wall, there is a corridor behind some barrels that leads to a dark room with a Pharos contraption at the entrance. This contraption unveils an illusory wall to a secret room containing a chest with a soul vessel inside. Also in the main room are several other chests containing a bone staff, a parrying dagger and a twin blade. In the back corner of the room is another small room containing a chest with wilted dusk herb. But more importantly, there is a cage elevator that you can enter which will then bypass the need to do the ruined sentinel boss fight. Number 15. Once you have defeated the ruined sentinels, providing you didn't choose to skip them, there is an illusory wall directly opposite the exit. This illusory wall is hiding a room containing a ladder. Up the ladder is another room with a chest containing the Hush Sorcery. This sorcery reduces the sound made by the caster. Then, facing the ladder on the right hand wall, about halfway down the room, is another illusory wall leading you to one of the balconies back in the main boss room. Number 16. From the bottom floor of the boss room, head to the exit and go up the staircase. At the very top of the stairs on the left hand wall is an illusionary wall. Press enter and in the secret room you will find an enemy to dispatch and a chest containing a Rouge Water, which restores 850 HP and 50% of spell uses. Number 17. Again, on the bottom floor of the Ruined Sentinel boss room, on the wall opposite where you originally entered the arena, you will find an illusory wall leading to a secret room with a chest containing the target shield. Number 18. On the same wall as the previous illusory wall, on the second section from the right corner, you will find an illusory wall hiding well, absolutely nothing. It's just a completely empty room. And as that was such a disappointment, we can't really class it as its own secret. So to the immediate right of the empty room is another illusory wall containing a rusted coin, which when used will increase luck and item discoverability calculation by 100 points for five minutes. Number 19. Still in the Lost Bastille, in the room with the large iron grating in front of the cage elevator, there is a small offshoot room in this empty room, there is an illusory wall on the very far wall. Once activated, you will walk through into a diagonal corridor. At the end of the corridor is a green blossom. But also, when facing the entrance to the corridor, on the right hand side is another illusory wall. This then leads to a small area outside where the Pursuer will spawn in. But also, if you walk a bit further down the side of the building, you can find the Bracing Knuckle Ring, which when equipped will slow weapon degradation by 20%. On the wall is a shortcut taking you back towards the Servant's Quarters bonfire. But if you instead head back to the area where the Pursuer spawns in, you can do a running jump over the gap to the far wall and collect a flame butterfly and a torch. You can then also follow the edge of the wall all the way to the right, and eventually you will come to a soul of a brave warrior and the golden wing shield. You can then drop down and head back to Macduff's workshop bonfire. Number 20. Head down the wooden platform elevator that leads to the Lost Sinner boss. Once you're at the bottom of the elevator, head into the first alcove on your right, and on the left of the back wall, there is an illusory wall. Once unveiled, you will have access to an open water section, but be careful not to stray too far, as you may end up sinking before you can swim. Providing you don't walk off the edge, 
Immediately on the left of the area, you will find the Northern Ritual Band, which increases spell use by 10% and a Bleedstone. Bonus Secret! To finish things off, let's head back to Medulla for a secret that you definitely didn't know about. Did you know that our friends the Three Little Pigs are hiding their own secret? Well, if you kill the three enslaved pigs 12 times, they will then spawn back in as two undead boars. And yes, you've guessed it, if you then kill the two undead boars 12 times, they will spawn back in as one giant undead boar, which when you kill it has a guaranteed drop of three cracked red eye orbs. And that's it! Let me know in the comment section below how many of these you already knew about. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Dark Souls content.